Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to give you a tour of the Gravenhurst Antique and Classic Boat Show. It's in Gravenhurst, Ontario. It's an awesome show. I've been going since I was a little kid. I love wooden boats. I've had a couple big wooden crisscrafts, one gravette that sort of was the one that got away back when, and uh, I've always wanted to find another wooden boat, and just maybe, maybe, at the end of this video I'll have a surprise for you. So let's see how it turns out and go watch the show.
So as you can tell, I was pretty taken by that Century there. Um, it's a Century Coronado. And I'll tell you why, they're really rare. Um, they're, basically, they're, there's not very many of them left. There was never really a whole lot of them produced. Um, that boat threw me off a little bit because they're usually white. They have some type of white striping on them. Um, I didn't know a whole lot about the 61s. I don't know what each year, I'm not that proficient on them to say, this year has that stripe, this year has that stripe. I've come to find out that basically what the stripe is supposed to be is come down from the hard top, have a rocket on the front, um, and the deck all the way around the deck is supposed to be white. Um, so that's kind of threw me off on that boat for a minute. But So like I said, I fell in love with that boat even as rough as it was, and uh, sent a text message to Joanne and I ended up owning it. So here it is in the shop, and I realized in my haste and all the excitement I never actually took a video explaining the boat and explaining why I love it and, and all that stuff about it. But um, here's the thing. I never really talked about wanting to own a Century Coronado. Um, I never talked about really wanting to own a Century anyways because they are quite rare up here. Um, kind of the same way as my 51 Mercury. Joanne was shocked years ago when I told her about the 51 Mercury and explained it all to her. Um, it just... They're sort of one of those things where there's not a whole lot of them, especially up here in Canada, that you sort of just go, I don't even want to you know, wrap myself around it and get all excited and work myself up to think that I can own one and then never be able to own one. Um, because usually the centuries, you find them and they're done, restored, and I can't afford that uh, because there's going to be hundreds of hours that end up into this thing restoring it, you know, and that costs money. Same thing with the Mercury. The ones that are finished that you can find up around here are so expensive and to be honest I don't really, I never wanted one that was finished to somewhere, someone else's spec sort of. So that's, you know, same thing on the Mercury, same thing on this. I never really thought I'd be able to own one so I never really talked about it. Anyways, awesome, awesome boat, Century Coronado, they made them for many years. However, there weren't many of them made and not a whole lot of them came to Canada. The production numbers I can find so far in this boat, and I'm just waiting to get all that st stuff together. I'll get the number off of it and send it into the Century Boat Club, so hopefully I can get the complete package. But I think in 61, which this is a 1961, that this year here, I think there was only around 70 of them made, and not all of them were at the hard top with the gull wings on it. I've also seen the number thrown around about 150, 160, but that can be from 61 and 62 because they had sort of the same look. They were virtually the same boat. Um, so anyways, then it'll you know sort of dive down a little bit more rare depending on what motor the boats had and whatnot. And this one apparently had the Cadillac motor in it with two four barrels. That was taken out. There's a 350 put in there. You'll see that as I go through and sort of do a walkthrough on this boat. Again, I managed to do that, but somehow I didn't manage to do this in my excitement. As with a lot of old stuff, there's typically a story that goes along with it. So this one here, the fellow that originally restored it many, many years ago, lives not too far away from me, who I actually ended up meeting at the Motorama Custom Car Show talking about my 51 Mercury when I was there. Like, totally bizarre. This whole community is such a small community. Anyways, it then sat outside for a long time with the second owner, when the, he passed away, basically sat there and rotted. Um, two other fellows ended up getting it. I got it from the second one of those, um, is who sold it now. And he just figured, I'm never going to get to it. It's going to be a project that's going to take him years to get to. So he decided to sell it off and let someone else have a crack at it. And I'm so happy that I'm that person. Anyways, that's enough yammering on about this. Let's get into the actual boat and I'll throw up a picture here of what it's supposed to look like with the actual stripes on it. Then we'll get into what I had to do to get this thing home and I'll show you a little walk around after. So thanks for tagging along with me and I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. Well, I'm honestly shocked that I made it this far. From the show, this tire is pretty much about to fall apart. I don't know if you can see that, but this part here is just complete look at it. It's just coming apart. So, anyways, I gotta go grab the tires and wheels from another trailer and uh, swap it out here.
What do you think? There we go. I realized I didn't have a jack or a lug wrench or anything, so I just had to go buy one. Don't know why I never thought of that before, just to carry one around with me with all the messing around I do. Anyways, now I got one, just a cheapie. It'll work. Logger five. Oh. It does make me a little nervous rooting around in here because we are in rattlesnake country. Massasauga rattlers. So, always keep a listening in an ear out. Chase has got the right idea. Sitting in the shade, aren't you, boy? My big doggy. All right, let's go get in the truck. So I don't know if you can tell, but the tire's pretty bulged out and goes a little bit crooked there. And there's the real damage. That would not have been good. All right, well, there's that one changed up, and the rest of them are pretty weather cracked, and. Uh, looking pretty bad but hopefully they make it home at least I've got a spare to get me home and uh, anyways once we get home I'll show you some more about this and tell you the whole story Okay, we made it home and uh, everything was all right. The tires didn't do anything crazy and the boat didn't do anything crazy. So here we are at home and let me give you a tour, a little walk around of this and show you the condition it's in and some of the stuff we're gonna have to fix up. So overall, it's in pretty good shape. Um, this is actually the worst side of the boat and for whatever reason, so we've got a lot of boards up here that we're going to need to be replaced and down the bottom of course um, all a lot of this top stuff is just superficial um, we can fix up some of this stuff with just some wood putty and the original colors of this boat is up here is supposed to be white anyways till basically the bottom of this board is all supposed to be white up here is supposed to be white um, and it's got like a stripe 
that'll come out that follows the stripe that follows this line comes down shoots out the front and then makes an arrow at the front basically where the name is so that's the paint scheme that's supposed to be on this boat and it actually kind of threw me off when I first saw it because I was like hmm, I know these boats and this seems a little bit funky but so that's gonna need to be fixed I mean a lot of this wood here is pretty rotten um, the bottom's gonna need to be completely redone and uh, you know a bunch of the frames need to be redone you know and you may look at this and go well, why even bother well first of all it's worth restoring because of what it is very rare boat this Century Coronado 1961 is a pretty rare model especially with the gull wing or t-tops that come up pop up and, and open up um, so that's a pretty rare boat down this side this side's actually not too bad I won't need to do a whole lot of woodwork on this side at all um, other than along the bottom here is about the worst of it on this side of the boat um, so that'll need to be fixed up but the top is in great shape even the interior other than being faded um, is in really great shape the seat back here was about the worst of it, it had a few little rips in it it's in the back of the truck right now um, and the seat frame needed to be fixed but other than that the interior is actually in really really nice shape so you can see this seats in nice shape just needs to be cleaned up a bit same thing with this front one just needs to be cleaned the dash is even really nice now this looks like kind of a pinky rose color but it's supposed to be red same thing with our top up here and uh, I'll flip those tops open so you can see them really cool steering wheel I think that's a Lincoln steering wheel anyways really really cool boat um, some really nice features this top pad up here is in really great shape all the chrome and stainless on the boat is in great shape the windshields nice a few spider cracks on the other side but man really really nice shape this is called your cut water at the front so the cut water is in really good shape I was a bit bummed out because it's sitting on the metal there a little bit but anyways it'll be alright so this big nose up here is in great shape the vents up top so those vents actually work they're portholes that you pull a lever and they'll actually work so really really great and came with this awesome aluminum trailer um, other than the tires obviously being shot this trailer is in great great shape small block Chevy in it and uh, I'll jump in now and show you that so your typical small block Chevy I don't know if it's a 327 or a 350 I'm gonna assume it's probably a 327 but I'll run the casting number on the block and just see um, it's rated on the little plate here is a I think a 250 horsepower which seems a little bit light these were usually up closer to three, but 250 sure okay. Um, velvet drive transmissions, that's a great transmission. So, seats are really nice. I mean, these seats are just pretty cool. Again, they need to be cleaned up. And even these side panels are in really good shape. So I just need to clean them up. The dash is in great shape. All the gauges are still really nice. So I'm not even gonna worry about the interior at the moment. Oh, it looks like this seat popped out on the drive home anyways we can fix all that up but all the interior is in really great shape other than just being faded so I mean I, I'm happy with that I'll just clean it up the best I can and maybe even just vinyl dye it or you know what just leave it alone so let me show you these tops flipped up they're really cool so remove a latch here pull the latch at the back and up she comes oh up she comes and there it flips up now this one is just missing a piece of hardware that can hold it up like that but it basically you can run it up like that or you can pop them off just pop it straight out and they come straight off just like that so now oops it's t-tops So there you go, my new 1961 Century Coronado. It's gonna be awesome. I can't wait to get into this thing. Obviously, I've got a ton of other projects, but this was literally one of those things, just like the 51 Mercury, that was an absolute dream, and I never thought I'd be able to get one. Was totally shocked to see it at the show there, and uh, just, I'm just beside myself that I own this thing. It's pretty crazy. So anyways, thanks for tagging along. Like, share, subscribe, follow, all that good stuff. And 
We'll catch you in the next video.